editor of The Alchemy Spoon together with Roger Bloor and Vanessa Lampert. It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome you to The Metal Issue, issue two of The Alchemy Spoon. We were thrilled by the volume and quality of the poems submitted, which proved that metal can be stretched to extraordinary levels of complexity. And it was an incredibly hard job whittling the poems down to the ones we finally selected, close on 50. You're about to hear 20 of these wonderful poets reading their poems. The issue also includes Tamar Yoselov's insights into starting her publishing house, Hercules Press, a beautiful reading by Niall Campbell, 14 reviews of poetry books that have recently been published, and Wayne Holloway-Smith gives an inspiring, generous interview. But first, I'd like to thank Tara Bergen, who's about to introduce the launch. Tara Bergen lectures part-time on the Newcastle University Creative Writing Poetry Programme. She has two collections of poetry. This is Yarrow, which won the Seamus Heaney Centre for Poetry Prize in 2013, and The Tragic Death of Eleanor Marks, which was named Book of the Year 2017 by The Times and The Irish Times, and shortlisted for the T.S. Eliot Prize, the Forward Prize, and the Irish Times Poetry Now Award. She is currently working on her third book. She has a PhD from Newcastle. And more importantly for us, Tara ran the Newcastle Summer School Programme for Poetry MA, on which Roger, Vanessa and I first met. Let's welcome Tara Bergen. Hello. I'm delighted to be here to launch the new issue of The Alchemy Spoon, which is called Metal. I'm very lucky because as one of the tutors on Newcastle's MA in writing poetry, here we all are at the summer school, I had the chance to work with some of the poets who feature in this issue and have witnessed the transformations that have taken place as they set to work. Although interestingly, sometimes the best results came about through a kind of reversed alchemy when they would take what was precious and return it to its baser form. This magazine showcases and stands for the seriousness with which its editors take the written and spoken word. There is a point in a poet's writing life when they decide to send something off to a magazine. They may tell no one that they have done it, and they may hear nothing back or receive a rejection, but that's a different matter. The point is that it marks a significant moment when they, secretly or not, must call themselves a poet and face up to the consequences. This can be a turning point. And of course, to have a poem accepted by a magazine can be one of the most exciting moments for a poet starting out. The poetry magazine is therefore a vital point in a poet's journey. So it's a great pleasure, as we hurtle towards the end of one year and the start of another, for me to launch this issue of such an impressive, beautiful and forward-facing magazine. Here's to the alchemy spoon and all who sail in it, now and in the future. Chris Hardy is now going to read his poem, Catching Silver. Chris is a widely published poet with four collections and is also a musician in Little Machine, performing their settings of well-known poems at literary festivals. Chris Hardy. Catching Silver. Three ships outside the harbour, two destroyers and a liner, and my mother asking, who gives way? Boys in the water beneath the bow, swimming amongst pipefish and spidery green medusas, shouting up for money, catching specks of silver that flash down in the sun, in their mouths. Men lying in the street, who I thought were dead but were asleep, dozens of them, and children who followed with imploring hands, shouting and fighting when I dropped some coins. Only later can you make out how it all went together, that what you saw passed through you like a spear of light. Sarah Levy is now going to read In the Silence of the Beautiful White Torpedo Tube. Based in London, Sarah is currently studying for her poetry MA and has been published in several anthologies and poetry news. Sarah Levy. In the silence of the beautiful white torpedo tube, the scan begins with no ticked on the checklist for metal implants, coils, stents, 
I wait for the magnetic pull at a forgotten bolt, plugged deep in grafted cartilage, the bile wretch tug and twist to loosen it and tear through flesh. Perhaps there'd been a childhood dash to A&E, some surgical repair to drill and pin a bone, long since healed and never mentioned. My parents hazy on the details, unsure of which rough sibling pushed or which one fell. The machine creeps along pulsating veins, inspecting every organ, valve and joint. Eyes keen as a foreshore mudlark, sifting through the crimson wash and gristle for a glint of alloy plate or screw. No metal found, but still the tutting click, the slow insistence to scan each inch beneath the tide line of my body for what's amiss, and look, so small and deep, we almost missed it. There. Simon Madrill will now read three lettered. Simon hails from the Isle of Man. His debut chapbook, which is reviewed in this issue, came out this autumn and a second pamphlet won the Rialto Pamphlet Prize. Simon Madrill. Three lettered. All that there's left is ivory seed and breaths fluid. That hellish crimson ink draws a life so poached and reproached. Three-lettered iron reaching gut deep, love's purity now a tainted hemlock, steel rings chastise a poison zest. Nightmares slip and slap too hard and dark, a shaman walking in ashen graveyards, lesbians stroking bones that bleed. Ben Morgan will be reading Wayland's Love Song. Ben is a poet, academic and teacher in Oxford. He's been widely published and his first pamphlet, Medea in Corinth, came out in 2018. Ben Morgan. Wayland's Love Song Before we grow flesh, we are metal, angular statues of light in the house of the sun and the moon, gathering, each of us, light like a basket of flowers, until light itself usurps every colour, a lily on the face of the water that falls to the seabed, a salt, a star, old bullion. I carve you, my love, out of light, my soul's knife gentle and my fingers quick, pinching your nose into shape, smoothing away shadow, wrinkle, lopping off errors, the antlering wax on your forehead, the droop of your wing. Matthew Paul will now read Double Chemistry. Matthew is the author of two collections for haiku and The Evening Entertainment, which came out in 2017. Matthew Paul. Double Chemistry. The hardest lads of 5N3 hold a smoke ring competition at the back of the lab, toking away on Benson and Hedges, sparked off the Bunsen burners, while the rest, as always, toast squidgy pink marshmallows. In the moment, Mrs. Schwenk combines sarsen's vinegar with zinc. Martin Lunt sits his grey trousered arse on a white hot marble nugget and howls like a werewolf shot through the heart with a silver bullet. No one comes clean, neither then nor later in the after-school detention. Not the next morning either, when Mr. Claggett the head of year, his face already ketchup red, labels us chinless louts. And as soon as he's realised we're all in fits, a rabble of unemployable shits. Julie Robick is a poet, 
voice artist and puppeteer. She will be reading two poems, Red Plums at Evening and Carlos Acosta on the Tiles. She's been widely published in the UK and US and has two collections published by Live Cannon. Jilly Robbick. Red Plums at Evening. Furnaces flame over flame. Hairless forearms, slick with sweat, shoot molten rapids. Hard hats, visored eyes, gauntlet hands, tongues working the outside of teeth. Clang, hiss, anneal. Shift change siren. Donkey jackets slant to the pub. Serious thirst. Nicotine windows. Elastic smoke, overflowing ashtrays, coughs and camaraderie. Saint Sebastian dartboard, wrecking bald skittles, pitchpenny benchmark, hung up horse brasses, reflective glassware, a bowl of plastic fruit. Carlos Acosta on the tiles. Another tar-filled day, tap-dancing on sun-baked tiles. Gouge, lift, chuck in rhythm, over the edge to tipper. Back-broken bitumen, terracotta scattering hard rain onto palms and pavers. Roofer hoofers, wheelbarrows along roof ridge. Forward kick, roll felt into place, retreat. Forward canter, bang nail gun, retreat. Forward mop, steaming tar. Retreat. Roof sealed and signed off. Tic tac routine. Straw hat, noon sky burns. Rest under truck, nested on unwrapped sweat cloths and big plastic bottles of warm cola. Tiles glide relentlessly from flatbed to roof, where one unhurries to retrieve a second's grace before mist tiles fall without breaking step lift and pirouette, dance to roof-end stacks. Conveyor retracts, lowers its neck to the garden. Broken flowers shudder back into silence. Baked earth weaves across roof slopes. Intricate red braids tied up for the night. Morning reflects in copper templates, pinned along eaves tiles rest on at the precisely right angle. Roofers, deft as casino card sharps, deal tiles flick flick into place, poker face display. Gutters and ridges metalled, angles finger clad, clay slipped, fixed and edged before a sheen of rain settles the red dust. Shin down ladders, clean away, time step the hot sidewalk, exercise at the bar. Next, staying on the silver theme, Steve Harrison will be reading Silver Threads. Originally from Yorkshire, now living in Shropshire, Steve performs across the Midlands and is published in many print and online journals. Steve Harrison. Silver Threads. Stainless steel spokes, plucked by the bicycle mechanic, who trues the wheel like a harpist listens to the strings, head pressed to tire for the right metallic ring. She caresses the ornate lugwork on the second hand frame, scoffs at the clumsy aluminium welds on the new important stuff, laments the empty black country factories turning out hand-built steel frames. Across the market, music shop mechanic Threads the metal strings, chrome machine heads force the tension. Eyes shut, he turns the winding pegs like an antique lock, listens for the right note, plays the same old blues lament to music made from silver threads. Thank you. Fenella Scott is Macar of the Federation of Writers, 
Her poems appear in many magazines and anthologies. Stanza have commissioned her work. And her pamphlet, published by Red Squirrel Press, is called Much Left Unsaid. Here is Fanola reading her poem, Fine Hunter, He Was Too. Fine hunter he was too. Did you see it? What did he cry it? Like our flints, which shine me sleeker. At first dark, when we gathered round a fire, eating von deer, the big one, he came in, out the woods, down the valley. We were hauling the meat off the bone, trying to chew the bigger bits. And out a corner of my ain, I spy them, slide a wee thing from its hidey in his cloak. Oh, sick a bonny bone handle too. But what did he cry it? The blade, I think. He brought it to the haunch. Sick a cutting edge, like the cusping moon. In slide, and there, there was a feather fine piece of meat lying on his cloak, a sliver. We smiled, welcome, and wondered, are there money mere like him? When will they come out the woods and do our valley? Jane Thomas's work has been published in many magazines, including Oxford Review of Books, Orbis, Stand and Envoy. She was commended in the Poetry School Stanza Competition, October 2020. Here's Jane reading her poem, Printed Matter. Printed Matter. The End of hot type and your sharp metal thoughts, all those fine words and slugs of cipher, crafted and cast from pigs of lead and time. Now it is the beginning of the cold. Your galleys of tusha run dry over smooth stones, creating confusion, smudges and letterpress doubt. The familiar dance of smooth steps, upside down, Flip, backwards, offset, reverse out. On our slow, considered, awkward and stiff-hipped. The results are out of register, with unreadable fonts, stray letter blocks, no binding, no proof, overprinting, half-tones, messages unclear. Susanna Violet is a Pushcart Prize nominee whose work has appeared in magazines right across the globe. Here she is reading her poem, Urn. Urn. I carry the memory of you in an urn upon my head. The rust of it has dyed my hair copper like the river I've loved and left. You, sacred python, you and your scarred coils, your effortless squeeze. In that world I carried a sickle, used it as a moon keen with devious magic. Stones on the riverbed are slick, tumbled dark hearts, give up granite beats to the rush. In it I am the amber of long lost treasure, or iron after the rain. Dave Wakeley is a poet from Buckinghamshire. And he's one of the organisers of Milton Keynes Lit Fest and Lodestone Poets. His fiction has appeared in many magazines. Here's Dave reading Alchemy 2. Alchemy 2.0. It is the metal season now. Even the air turns sharp as a steel edge. Outside, a silver birch auditions for an upgrade. It's fallen coins scattered in the evening shadow of a moon as cold and blue as cobalt against a lead-black night. Autumn's days are rusting, even the sturdiest branches brittle enough now to snap. 
The streets are paved with gold and copper, phosphor bronze, but they lead to the cemetery nonetheless. In the garden, the ginkgos flare into sodium, butter yellow leaves melting at our feet, winter turning treacherous beneath our step. A love inside may be what they used to call Greek, its bearers as English as rattled oaks, but the hope, it seems, is Japanese. Love's initial alchemy did not transform their basest materials, though its kindnesses flowed into waiting cavities, like mercury into a snap-toothed smile. So they turned to precious metals to decorate the harm, with time-learned tenderness, fingertips smooth lines of gold into their vessel's fractures, with Kintsukurai's burnished kiss, and pools to pray such flimsy porcelain will bear to take the metal's weight. Clint Rosling has recently published his poetry collection, Layers. He also has two bub published novels. Here he is reading his poem, Carte de Visite. Carte de Visite. Keep still. Watch the birdie. Magnesium ribbon burns and illuminates as the glass plate is exposed. Refined, cultured, you stare back at me. Dressed in your Sunday best, silver salts fixed the image, creating this carte de visite. A butler once delivered your card on a polished tray. Were you kind, well-mannered, erudite? Conform to all the social niceties, sherry at eleven, dinner at eight. Your great-great-grandchild might be our elderly neighbour, but all that remains of you is this anonymous photograph, and for that, I'm sorry. Judith Wozniak won first and third prizes in the Hippocrates competition 2020. She has an MA from Newcastle University and Poetry School London. Her pamphlet will be published in the summer of 2021. This is Judith, reading her poem, Reassigned. Reassigned. I peer out through a slit, breath brushes my lashes. Rhythmic clicks count beats with pulses of light. In a room without shadows, ice white, steel glittered. Bound in my chrysalis of dressings, I long for the velvet touch of darkness. I no longer own myself, too late to unwind time. Fractured fragments, pinned, realigned, titanium mesh, sculpt who I should be. He looms over me, whispers, your own mother won't know you, a glint of gold in his smile. Thank you. Veronica Zundel is a recent graduate of Poetry School London and the University of Newcastle's MA programme. Veronica has been writing for over 50 years and has poems published in a number of magazines and anthologies. Here's Veronica reading her poem, Carving. Hello, I'm Veronica Zundel and this is my poem, Carving. Start. Lift a wholly sharpened knife, keen edged by that weighty whetstone grief. After sighing, take a deeper breath. Accommodate your syllables to breath. Test the pairing qualities of your knife. Severing skin from flesh, sinew from grief. It's always in the bones you will find the grief. When all is flayed, nothing left but breath, pulsing blood sprung open by the knife. Sculpt the poem with knife, grief, breath.
Now we have Ruth Aylett, who's going to read her poem Scaffold. Ruth's been published widely in magazines and anthologies, including The North, Interpreter's House, South Bank Poetry. Her pamphlets Pretty in Pink and Queen of Infinite Space are due out in 2021. Ruth Aylett. Hello, I'm Ruth Aylett, and this is a short poem called Scaffold. Verticals placed onto wood blocks, horizontals hammered in. This is not an argument. Planks, poles thrown upwards, caught casually, clanged, laid. This is not conceptual framing. Their skill is routine, unshowy. They do not surprise each other. This is not a republic. Cold metal drips with autumn rain. With scaffolding up, Roof work can start. This is not political metaphor. Thank you. Now Barbara Barnes is going to read her poem Amalgam. Barbara is a Canadian born poet and actress living in London. Her poems have appeared in Poetry London, Magma, Butcher's Dog and the first issue of the Alchemy Spoon. Barbara Barnes. Amalgam. Excess brought me here, craving carved out in innocent pain. His chair's professional tilt cradles me. My hands comfort each other on the rise and fall of breath. We must be precise, this man and I. Between us, a clever offering of silver filings bound to curious mercury. Together, we hold the world still while a single drop pools into place. Cruel vapors begin their patient infiltration. New surfaces tempt my tongue. In time, poison may weary my senses, unbutton my brain, but for now, I forget the threat of yellow-eyed demise. Test my thawing smile, my quicksilver smile. Now Catherine Beavis is going to read her poem, Revelation. Catherine is Hampshire Poet 2020, and recent awards include winning the poetry and players and against the grain competitions, and being shortlisted for the Nine Arches Press Primus Scheme and Live Canon competition. Catherine Beavis. Revelation. Then darkness fell into the sky, faster than we knew how. So we huddled close inside your car, which yearned to hold the conspiracy of our breath against its windows and to hide us from each other and ourselves the way it does when we sit not face to face, but side by side. Then lightning cracked the sky ajar and we saw the silver light behind the world. So fierce, it seemed to see us back. It's with me still a fuse that glitters every time I blink. Now we're going to hear from Sue Burge, who's going to read a poem Ode to Rust and Mould. Sue's a freelance creative writing and film studies tutor based in Norfolk, and her first collection, Kingdom of Shadows, was published by Live Cannon, and she's her second pamphlet, The Saltwater Diaries, it's published by Hedgehog Poetry Press in 2020. Sue Burge. Hello everybody, I'm Sue Burge and I'm going to read a poem called Ode to Rust and Mould. O oh, lickable rust with your bite and thrust, insatiable leech, you are my bit of rough, my pickable lust, powdering under the screet of my fingernail. Praise be your stereoscopically observable scales, O oh, my friable friend, my goddess dolled up in leaping flame. To you I have sacrificed a lifetime of metal. O oh, electron thief, corrosive chameleon, so easy to spot in a lineup. It's you, it's you in your arsenic green underwater disguise. Oh, then glory to the mould on my daily crust, 
penicillium blue green gray of lovers eyes of stormy skies pinprick schwartz on my shiny tiles a million trillion unsqueezed blackheads O oh, splendiferous growth, speckling my jam like resting snowflakes, awaiting the scalp of my prizing spoon. You yeasty, moist seeker, feisty fungal foo fighter, oh the fuzzy, microblombulous, unstoppable, spiriferous, multitudinous mystery of you. Thank you very much. Now Diana Kant is going to read her poem Rust. Diana is a child psychotherapist with an MA in writing poetry from Newcastle University. Her poems have been published in anthologies such as Ink, Sweat and Tears, Nine Muses and Brittle Star. And her pamphlet Student Bodies 1968 was published this year by Clayhanger Press. Diana Kant. Hello, I'm Diana Kant and this is my poem Rust. Ground bruise blackened, soil hard worked, furrowed, iron on stone, scars of toil on thin skinned earth. Two rusting plowshares, pot marked and pitted, red ferric crumbling of an old horseshoe. Hidden in the brush, an injured fox cub, paw slashed on flint, russet red, alone. How is it that a body rusts? An overnight bruise? A skin too thin? No longer springing to the touch? Thank you. Now Rebecca Gethin is going to read two of her poems, Sodium Chloride and Savisic. Rebecca has written five poetry publications and has been a Hawthornden Fellow and a poetry school tutor. Messages was a winner in the first Coast to Coast pamphlet competition and Vanishings has just been published by Palewell Press. Rebecca Gethin. Savisic, Meteor Island, Greenland. This asteroid was a shooting star and blazed across the universe before its heavy fragments plummeted into Cape York's permafrost, shaping its snowland. Inuit named each of the heaven stones for things needed for their survival. A seal skin shelter, a woman sewing skins, a sleeping dog, Nunatak, Anigito, Miki. The island was their secret treasure store. Atomic bonds formed meteoritic edges for tools once made from narwhal tusk and for blades to harpoon, seal or walrus, for needles, ice axes, flints. Over centuries the stones were hacked for their iron, the snow all about littered with hammer stones. If overladen, sledges could fall through the ice. The whereabouts was finally given away for a single gun, meteorites were dragged to the kite through the snow by Greenlander men but it took a crane and 28 horses to draw them through New York streets. When hoisted into the city's museum with no weather, no seasons and only electric light they became dumb stones, dead stars. Like the five Inuit they enticed aboard. Sodium Chloride My grandmother held the licence to sell salt, legacy of a war widow's pension. Customers would ask for a kilo or a half, or if money was tight, just 50 grams in a twist of paper. She scooped grains of sea from a sack brought up by mule, measured the trickle of crystals whispering into the pan until the scales balanced. Her salt was on every table, preserved meat and fish, blanched sheets. She reared eight children during two wars 
that were heard when the wind blew thunder in their direction. She kept soup on the stove while husband and eldest worked the land until the boys were called up to fight in one war after the other. Over time, her fingertips whitened. She could never wash away the salt taste from under her nails. When she woke, she found more and more salt grains in her eyes. This woman of salt quarried of tears. The poem accompanying the essay for this edition of The Alchemy Spoon is by the Scottish poet Neil Campbell from his first collection, Moontide. Here's Neil reading, The letter always arrives at its destination. Hello, my name is Neil Campbell and I'm going to read the poem, The letter always arrives at its destination. The title itself is a quote by Lacan that I came across in a book called Enjoy Your Symptom. And the idea behind the quote is the letter might not arrive at its intended destination, but that it being lost or misplaced or winding up somewhere it didn't expect might open up other things. Um, when I read the quote, it made me think immediately of growing up in the Outer Hebrides and throwing bottles out to sea. The idea, you know, when you're young of wanting to reach some people or some place and at that time particularly not being able to. The letter always arrives at its destination. Then I wrote often to the sea, to its sunk rope and its salt bed, to the large weed mass lipping the bay. The small glass bottles would be lined along the bedroom floor, ship green or church glass clear, such envelopes of sea mail. Only on the day of sending would a note be fed into each swollen, brittle hull. I had my phases. For so long it was maps, maps of waderness, burrows and foxes' dens. Maps when nothing was in its true position, my landscape blooming from the surf. Later, I'd write my crush's names onto the paper as a small gift. The caps, then tested and wax sealed. None ever reached my dreamed America, its milk-white shore. As most would sink between the pier and the breakwater, and I would find that I had written about the grass to this drowned sand again, and to the sunken dark I'd sent all the light I knew. Thank you. Well, sadly, that brings us to the end of the launch of the second edition of The Alchemy Spoon. I'd just like to thank all of the poets who read tonight, and thank Tara Bergen for her introduction, and thank all the poets who contributed to the magazine, to all who submitted to the magazine and made it such an interesting task in trying to put together this uh, edition. Printed copies of the magazine will be available towards the end of December um, from Clayanga Press, the address for that website is on the screen now, and it's also available uh, online. Um, and again, the link for that is through the Alchemy Spoon website, which again is on the screen now. If I could encourage you to visit certainly the Clayhanger Press uh, website and look at all of the interesting publications we have on sale, then that will help to support Clayhanger Press, which will enable to ensure that uh, the Alchemy Spoon continues um, with its present track record of, of some brilliant poets publishing with us. The next issue is, the, is due out in the new year and the window for submissions for that will open in February and the theme for that is spell which I think gives an interesting range of interpretations of, of that. I look forward to having 
the chance to read all the submissions we'll, we'll get for that. So, once more, thank you to everyone and thank you for attending the launch and for comments you made to the poets on the chat facility. Good night from me, good night from the Alchemy Spoon and good night from Clayhanger Press. <laughs>